Hey folks, Steve here, and today we're going to talk about how to get started on your Focus Mirror game Fed, as well as a few tips on on gameplay to expand beyond the basic rules. I'm not going to go into the basic rules because those that's best explained in the instructions. First, what you, first thing you're going to need to do is come up with a name for your federation. Now, if you're going to use sets like Ring of Honor or Chikara, name the name is right there. But if you're going to combine sets or use the Legends of Wrestling games, then you can, you can either come up, you can either use the, the name that they use, in, they give in the instruction booklet, the LWF Legends Wrestling Federation, or come up with a name of your own. For example, I live in South Carolina where the state, well, the state tree is the Palmetto, so I would call it the Palmetto Wrestling Alliance. Simple and straightforward. Now, next, you're going to need storage for your cards when you get them. Now, I would suggest using storage bags, either from Ziploc or America's Choice, usually about 8x7 and capacity of about a quart. Very easy to uh, then, uh, organize your cards by singles and tag teams and, and women if you have enough. Now, as for dice, like I said before, when you get a starter set, you get, you get these dice, but they're very small and have a tendency to get lost. So I would suggest getting at least for for using for using dice for dice get two standard dice with with pips for usually rolling on the chart and two additional dice each a different color for each player on offense and defense. Then you're gonna need about eight ten sided dice Two of them being a specific color, while the remaining six being a different color to keep track of the key tokens, which I will talk about later. Now, let's see what's next. Now, play area. In other words, table to play the game. I would suggest using a 4x4, four four, a, four, a, a table 4 feet by 4 feet in area. I have a, my table is, uh, have a laptop on here, is about two and a half on each side, so it's a, it's a little crowded for me, but I'm able to manage as I play on my own. Now, now to keep your record, uh, as far as win-loss win records and champion history and um, booking shows, you're going to use either Microsoft Auto programs from Microsoft Office, be including Excel for keeping track of your record, and Word for, for uh, typing out your matches, or you, can, but, or you can use or you can use Apache Open Office, which is free to download, and which can you, you can use text documents and spreadsheets to do that. Now for your schedule, I would suggest structuring it out in, in well, for the Champions of the Galaxy game, each, every year they come out with a game year. For example, this year they're coming out with 2131, so yeah, there you go. But for the, well, for the games based on real life promotions, I would suggest doing it in seasons and but either way, you need you don't have to do twelve months. You can you can run it in well I for me for example, I usually do each year or season I do about four month four to six months of game time so I can cycle back and forth between different feds. Now each month would be composed of of four week four weeks of shows and one pay-per-view and you would do each month on a single text document and when you're done with that you move to the next month in a new document 
However, however, with Chikara, I, I was running it in the 80s. I was just running it in episodic format, usually about 13 episodes. I think it works, especially if you're an anime fan. Now, as far as the roster size, it depends on how big your shows you want to be. For myself, for example, I use, just as an example, if you do two matches, two tag matches per show, you would need six to eight teams. Um, let's see. And if you're going to do six, six singles matches, I'd suggest about maybe 20 to 24 wrestlers, including tag wrestlers that you, that you want to use for the singles rankings. Otherwise, you can just sort them down to the bottom of the rankings and not use them for singles. If you're using Chikara, uh, <coughs> pardon me. If you're using Chikara and you're going to incorporate trios matches, I would suggest do one trios match per episode. That way it's a little less confusing and you're focusing more on the tag matches. Now, um, these are just basic things that you can do to keep track of, to structure your fed when you start out. Uh, I'm, if anyone's interested, you can uh, post down in the comments and ask me uh, how you... I keep track of win loss records and certain other things. Now, going on to the advanced rules that would expand upon the gameplay and incorporate a little bit more of decision making since the basic rules are just roll the dice, your opponent rolls to react, and go back and forth until someone wins. Now, first advanced rule that you should definitely use are Taking fatigue into account, finisher ratings, and the add one move. Now, if those of you have looked at the, have have access to your to a card, notice that the, each wrestler's pin rating, the one on the right on the left, is about um, three points higher than the one in parentheses. The one in parentheses is for the, the advanced rules. Now that makes me, like, a pin rating of 4 would have an advanced rating of 1. Now that doesn't sound right, but if you remember from the instructions, every time you kick out of a pin, your pin rating increases by 1. So that increases, that makes the match last longer and more realistic, I suppose. As well as finisher ratings, when those are rolled, you add them to the current, your, when the, your opponent rolls their finisher, it is added to their pin rating. So the rating is added to your pin, your, your pin rating, and that would be the new target number you have to roll above. And, and the add one moves are similar. They add they add they add to the pin rating. That's where the ten sided dice come into play to keep track of how much fatigue you gain and how much you add to your pin rating. Next, the agility and power moves. Usually those are found on level one offense. Usually, but there are instances where sometimes a a wrestler has it has one on level two offense. Usually those are a little weaker. Those, those guys are a little weaker. I would suggest I would definitely suggest using it since a lot of guys have a level three move on a three a move three on level one that has that option on it and it would give them it wouldn't make them it kind of doesn't it kind of makes their level one offense a little less broken I think so for example if if a guy has a, a, a level three move on level on level one offense that has an agility on it and his, his his regular his agility rating is zero. That means that it would only work if if his opponent has a power rating of zero or worse. Keep in mind, in case those of you who don't know, power ratings are ranged from well, power and agility ratings go as worse. The lower, the lower the number, the better. So, like minus five is the best, 
minus five is the plus five is the worst. So keep that in mind. Next is the basic choice chart. Basic chart choices. And now I mentioned before that when you get a, a basic set, you would let's see. Where I, get. I apologize. Jeez. Uh, You would get star sets would get these charts. I was mistaken. Apparently, with uh, with more recent sets, you would get colored the updated color charts. So I will be putting those into account when it comes to this these advanced rules. Now, basic choice chart. Usually on level two or level three. If you have a chart instruction, sometimes it will have a, a C in parentheses next to it. That means you have the option of rolling, having your opponent roll on the chart, or re-roll on the next level up, fall back to the previous level of offense. For example, if you have a into the ropes on level two and you have the the choice option, you can either have them roll on the chart or fall back to level one and roll again. Now, I would suggest I would suggest the re-roll and fall back on only on one instance. If your opponent has a if your opponent's rating on that chart has an A rating, if B you have a slight chance of them since the lower you roll on the you roll on the chart, the better. For, for the person who rolled. So, if, you, if they have an A rating, I would suggest using the, using the re-roll choice. Now, for leaving the ring, pardon me, uh, on level, there is one, you, most wrestlers on level three of defense has on their one of their down instructions have the LV in parentheses, which gives them the opportunity to roll out of the ring and roll and subsequently roll on the out of the ring chart. Now, only time you should not use this is if you have a C rating, since your your window of success is very low. Now, choice situations. This is I would suggest not using it at first since it does kind of interrupt the flow of the match. However, it, there are some advantages to it, especially if a wrestler has choices A, B, G, and A, B, G, or H. Which, a, if they have A, it's their only chance of the only way of using the into the ropes chart. B for in the turnbuckle and G and H for for death jump. Now most of the aside from the the chart instructions on that, you also have the moves that are available in, for each for, for each situation. Now and each one has a target number, and you have to add or subtract uh, your opponent's. Uh, applicable power or agility to it, and that will be the number you have to they have to roll. You have to roll in in order for them to roll on the appropriate level of defense. You should take that into account and decide which move you want to use, or if you want to use the the uh, the chart instruction if you're going to do that. Next, next is disqualification moves. Those those are kind of rare. For example, uh, Jimmy Jacobs in Ring of Honor has a one of his finishers is Railroad Spike. It's a plus three rating, but it's disqualification rating of four, meaning yeah, before your opponent rolls for their, rolls their pin, you have to roll the dice to see if you roll four and under. If you do, you're disqualified and they win. Now, for most disqualifications. Especially when it comes to outside the ring, I I would suggest 
disqualification is only if you roll the, roll under the number or roll the number or under two times in a row. When it comes to outside interference charts or or pin saves or moves that involve weapons, those disqualified only if for the regular uh, one roll. That, that makes I think that's fair. You could you could consider it uh, leniency on the part of the referee. View table now. That's on for those. That's for the on the opposite side of the uh, into the turnbuckle, which well the original charts all the all the results involved in the referee getting a certain referee getting injured. You can only use this if you're deciding on. Grouping your guy, grouping your roster together into various stables and building up certain rivalries. I don't really use it that often. Only in uh, my GWF Champions of the Galaxy fed. Now, this this particular one is. Let, let me see. There are only four instances, four out of the six results that involve. The rest are getting injured. The other two kind of may help you decide how matches are going to flow into the next show, in, into your next, uh, the following week of programming, I suppose. Uh, you, use it with your, use it in, with your own discretion. Tag and trio moves. Now, a, a lot of wrestlers who are tag specialists, um, and they have moves that take tag next to them. You can only use them during tag matches most of the time in, in when they have a specific partner with them. Um, I would not use them in tag matches especially if they have more than have more than one. Since by the, from what the rules say if you roll them during a, during a tag match uh, I, mean, I mean during a singles match you have to re-roll on the same level. But there are some some people some people myself included sometimes there are certain cards that have, that would have alternate instructions usually indicated on the bottom of the card. Or you can make your own rules and say for example, if it, if if a guy has a move, has a tag move on level one and it's a three, you could substitute it for a a one-man version of the move, which would be considered a level two. As for moves that are on level two or three, if they're an add one, you just if they're a three add one move, you just ignore the the add one. Trios moves; those are a few far, few and far between. As long as there's they're not all over the place, you can kind of work around them, I suppose. Defensive tag. Now, most most guys have them on each level of offense. That would allow them to do a, a do a hot tag in the in the midst of a tag team match. Now, the way that works is if the, if you roll a tag a defensive move that has tag next to it, you can ro choose to roll the dice, and if it's six and under. Your your partner comes in. You tag your partner in, and he kind he he goes on offense at level one. I would suggest doing this only if you're if if their pin rating is is lower than the, your legal guy at the at that moment. Pin saves. Now this is a little tricky I mean, since you only during regular tag matches you only have access to two and Trios matches gap three. I would suggest only I would suggest only using those then see. Well, the way I play it is only when the your pin rating goes to higher than six, so you don't waste them early on. But but you gotta remember Well, the problem is you're in trouble. You're kind of in trouble if you roll seven through ten, which means you have to roll. You have to roll 
roll, roll your pin anyway, and that means your any applicable pin, finisher ratings will come into come into play. Ringside allies. This would be helpful in, when you have a, a tag wrestler who has a partner who can't really who has too much tag moves, and you want to want to use them a little more effectively. Oh, well, what, what, what I mean is um, have them come to the ring with the with the other with his partner so he can help him out. And that would factor into the out of the ring chart. If you want to have them attack your opponent when you throw them out of the ring, he would attack him. You would announce that you're going to do it, and if you roll six and under, that means he attacks and. But then you have to roll disqualification rating six to see if you lose the match by DQ. If not, you, he roll, he throws them back in, and you take over on level three. Now that would be very advantageous, especially if your opponent has a rating of a ring rating of A, which which would rule out the um, <coughs> pun. Which would very much lower their chances of success of taking over. Distractor ratings. Now, there are a lot of manager cards and they have distractor ratings as well as ratings built into certain wrestlers that have managers incorporated into their card, especially dictated by their artwork. Now, I would usually those are ring, those ratings are range from five to nine and I would only use them if if your pin rating falls into that falls into that falls into the range of your distractor rating. For example, if a if your if your manager has a rating of not or eight or nine, I would not use it un, until your pin rating gets that high. Otherwise you're kind of wasting your one chance to use it. Outside interference, which is another thing you can use for your ringside ally or manager. Once again, I well, since most of the going to the outside interference chart, your better chances of success are usually around on rolls of six or seven. I, I would only use them when your pin rating gets that high. Now, these are just some of the ways you can uh, in, increase your enjoyment of the match and of each match and uh, ha have them feel more realistic. Uh, if you have any questions, please post down in the comments and let me know. Um, later on, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll do a few countdowns on my Fed. Um, probably starting with Ring of Honor. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't even know when I'm going to do my next video. So, stay tuned, you guys. See you around.